Good afternoon, y'all. I'm Marlene Bush, and this is Stitching by the Lake. I am in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and today is April the 30th, and it's about 12.15, so right into the afternoon, but just barely. It is cloudy here today, and it's going to rain late this afternoon. I was afraid it would do that because I've got to get out later. I've got a, an appointment for a manicure. Uh, and need to do a couple of little quick errands, and I'm hoping the rain will hold off until tonight so I don't get in it when I'm getting out. The, the winds this spring, uh, you can probably tell it with my hair because I've been outside a couple of times, the winds have been just horrendous. Have they been bad where you are? It's like they think it's March, um, and, and this is the last day of April. I don't know. Yesterday, Jerry and I went out and planted a bunch of flowers, and that's another thing. Have y'all noticed that the cost of plants has gone up like everything else? Anyway, we were planting flowers um, and herbs. I'm not planting vegetables this year. I bought a couple of um, tomatoes already in big pots, and they're going to stay on the deck. Uh, last year, the raccoons and the possums ate everything that I tried to grow, and we can't seem to regulate them, so I'm down, I'm down to herbs and flowers now. But that's okay. Those are pretty, too. Um, where was I? Anyway, the wind yesterday was horrendous, and it is today as well. I had um, taken a Zyrtec yesterday. I take a Zyrtec every morning through pollen season, and I also use Flonase twice a day. So thankfully, that kept me cleared up, but my eyes ran and my nose ran. It was horrible. <laughs> I just hate doing that. But we got everything planted. Well, all but one. And I am glad it's going to rain tonight because they need a good soaking, so that'll be, that'll be good. What else have I done this spring? Oh, I've done some spring cleaning. I've got a storage building in my backyard. When we moved in this house 19 years ago, it has a carport, and it has a freestanding garage. It's an old house built back in 75. And, of course, the garage was my husband's, but we had to use it for storage because we can't get in the attic of this house. And he complained all the time about my stuff in his garage. So... I had a little extra money, and I went out and bought myself a storage building, and it's mine. Not that it that it doesn't have some stuff in it that's his, because you know how that goes. Anyway, I'm a pretty organized person most of the time, but uh, my husband not quite as much as me. So when I ask him to take something out there, generally, he just sits it in the door, and that's it. So... Over the winter, um, a lot of things accumulated. All my seasonal decorations are out there. So Christmas uh, was put up in the loft part of it, but there was Valentine's Day and there was Easter and, you know, that kind of stuff kind of sitting around. And I had taken most of my winter clothes out as well. So, I worked on that a long time yesterday, um, which just about wore me out. At least I'm sleeping good because I'm staying busy. Not much else going on here. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to get to go up to our son's house. My granddaughter, youngest granddaughter, is on a dance team, a school dance team, and they're having a huge musical uh, this weekend. We went last year as well. So we'll go up tomorrow and see her dance, spend the night, and come back on Monday. Um, we went to my sister since the last time I talked to y'all. Spent, I think, five days up there. She and I went to, oh goodness, several antique stores, flea markets, you know, those kind of things. And I, I made some purchases, but not a lot. Um, some frames that I found. One sampler. In fact, let me show you all this. I bought one similar to this a year ago. Um, this is Ada 
no, E Ela Deb. And it's 1786. This I did not pay very much for this, y'all, because it is not an original. And I knew that when I bought it. It's actually machine stitched. I took it out and looked at the back. I don't know how they aged this. It looks like a muslin almost. But it does have the little interfacing behind it where they've stitched. That didn't matter to me. I just thought it was very pretty. I have a smaller one, Mary Ann Warren, that I bought last year. It's hanging up on the wall right up here. And the you can tell that it's not original when you look at it. It's very obvious. The threads are shiny. I think they're rayon maybe or something like that. Whatever machine embroidery threads are, that's what they are. And they've attempted to age the whole thing. And they've done a good job of that. <laughs> but um, it didn't matter to me. It was, it was very inexpensive. And so it was, um, it was pretty, and I thought it would look nice hanging on the wall in here in the sewing room, and I would enjoy it. So I bought that. Um, I don't think I bought any more Save the Stitches pieces. I did pick up all of the pieces that my sister had picked up at an estate sale for me that I told you all about last time. They are mostly told in a garden or shepherd's bush. They're all stacked over there, and I'm not going to try to show those today. There are 14 of them, and some of them are quite large. And I am going to use them to decorate a bedroom later this month. I haven't quite decided exactly what I'm going to do in there. But when I get that done, I'll take some pictures and show y'all, because they're really, really pretty. Those of you who love to stitch told in a garden... Uh, are going to love these. They're done very well. Done very well. What else is going on? Oh, I got several cards, um, sympathy cards about my brother, and I want to thank you for those. Um, those things always lift your heart a little bit. We are uh, missing him a lot, but we're making it. We're getting, we're doing okay. And I got a present from a friend that I want to show you. Not going to mention her name, but this she I laughed because I've done this so many times. This was new at market, and she bought two of them. She must have loved it a lot. I've done that so many times. This is G H eighteen fifty seven. I have chosen some threads. I'm going to do it with DMC, and. I have not chosen the fabric yet. It is in French, but most of it is in French and then English side by side. It was stitched by GH in 1857 at the age of 14, somewhere in the Netherlands, it says. They used a 32 count fabric, wheat by fiber on a whim was one I don't know what they used but that's one they suggested suggested and also vintage mocha I don't have either of those but I do have other things that I think will maybe work with this I haven't looked yet but I will and a couple of the colors the DMC colors you needed five skeins that green and that beige and there's some blues in there. So it's going to be really pretty. So thank you, my sweet friend. Another thing that happened since my last video was I went over 6,000 subscribers. I never thought that would happen. But it's exciting to me that it has. Um, and so it's time for a giveaway. And typically what I do for a giveaway when I hit one of those milestones is a gift certificate to the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock. It is a um, brick and mortar shop that's absolutely stunning if you've never been there. But it 
uh, also is a fabulous online shop. I call them. I've called them twice this week to ask questions. Well, to have some patterns put back for one thing, uh, but to ask questions about some uh, floss and things like that. And they are so so helpful and so sweet. The service is consistently great. Um, so, I am going to do a fifty dollar gift certificate to the Shepherd's Needle, and all you have to do is comment. It doesn't matter to me what you say. Um, well, it better be nice. I don't want any remarks that are not nice down there. Um, but I will just draw from those for the next time, and we'll do that giveaway. Okay, let's look at some stitching. I have, I think, three finishes. One, two, three. Four finishes and one is FFO'd. I had, I just got it back from Hobby Lobby a couple of days ago. This is one that I started in August of 20 with everybody else that started this particular one. And I'm going to have to back up. Um, this is Coming to America by Brenda Gervais. I bought the kit and it's a 32 count, but I, I, don't know what the fabric was. I don't remember and I didn't write it down. Anyway, finished. Let me see if I can get way back here. You can't see a thing when I get way back here, so I'm going to come up closer and show you just a few little things. First of all, the frame that I chose. The lady who does the framing there, oh, that's not good light, but if if you can see, let me see if I can get close this way. It's got a little filigree right there. It almost looks nautical. We thought it did anyway. I don't know why we thought that. But it's uh, she did a good job framing it. She did tell me that the fa she said the fabric crawled on her. And she said, I know it is not perfect. But she said, I pinned and repinned and pinned and repinned and just did the best I could with it because it just kept crawling. I understand that. I have done some as well uh, on my own that I felt like just crawled around and stretched and just wouldn't wouldn't stay where I wanted them to stay. I did not press interfacing on the back of this one. When I find a fabric that does that, crawling around stuff, I generally uh, will go back and put interfacing on it. And I've gotten to where I've put interfacing on almost all of mine. But because I knew this was going to the framer, I thought I'd probably better not do that. Anyway, it's uh, so exciting to have it done. I am thrilled to death with that. I didn't show you the pattern, but just in case there's someone out there who has not seen it, this is what it looks like. These are the names of the women who were on the Mayflower. And um, these are all my leftover threads. Aren't they pretty? They really are pretty in there. So I'm going to get those threads put back in the stash because I know I've probably been looking for some of them for some other things. Then I was watching Helen D, who does floss too, Helen Daly, and uh, she uses Helen D as her floss tube title. And Helen has designed some patterns. The latest one is, uh, I don't think she named it. I've been calling it Needles and Thread. And I'm going to show you the pattern I've marked on it, but no, I haven't. Um, but it is a free pattern if you go to her floss tube, and I'll link that below. She will have a link on hers to all of hers. And this is the second one, I think, that I have stitched. It looks like this. It has the words needles, thread, fabric, floss tube, and it has scissors and a needle and a tomato pincushion. And y'all, I looked my whole house over. I thought, I, I have one red pincushion, and it's a, an antique one. It's on a little stand on my German thread cabinet. 
sewing cabinet. I could not find another one in this house. I, I guess I just dreamed it. Um, but I don't have any tomato pin cushions. As I was shopping up at my sister's, I found a bowl at one of the flea markets that had probably 10 in it, all different sizes, and um, but they were all tomatoes. It, but they were like mm, $2.99 a piece, and that doesn't sound like much, but I really would like to have had a bowl of those so I could put this in it, plus a couple of other things I have planned to stitch. And I just couldn't see paying that. Maybe I should have. I don't know. Anyway, this is this is my stitching. And I did not use the threads that she called for because I didn't have them for the most part. I just pulled from my stash. She did not show leaving this thread hanging at the end, but I did. But I did leave that. I thought it was kind of a nice little touch. And her, her finish was a pillow, which is exactly what I planned to do. And she finished it so cute. She had a piece of um, measuring tape across there and then the fabric. So I'm going to try to copy hers. So, Helen, thank you so much for this. I loved stitching it. It was a lot of fun. And it's going to be a fun finish, too. And I, I'll be glad to have And I've got a bowl. I, take it? I took it in the other room already, ready for some that I'm planning to stitch in May. So I'll show you those in just a few minutes. Last night, I finished Abingdon. What's the, what is this? Abingdon something. This is JBW Designs. And that's the pattern for that. eighteen seventy eight Abingdon eighteen seventy eight I used Victorian motto sampler threads for this one I knew I was going to need quite a lot of thread um, and when I was looking I found that her America the beautiful and simply red were essentially the same color. I could not tell any difference. So I pulled from both of those. And when I put those back in my stash, I'm just going to put them together. I hope to stitch all of them in this pattern. But this is my first one to get done. It's on 32 count white chocolate. Let me see if I can... This fabric is very thin. And it was very easy to see it and stitch without a magnifier, just with a lot a good light. It's a very pretty pattern. I do confess, I don't normally do this, but y'all, I knotted some of my threads on the back of this because I couldn't. There were letters that were kind of the, they were kind of far apart. I couldn't carry. I couldn't, I didn't have anything to run the threads under. The pin stitch wasn't working well because the holes are kind of big. So I just, I have some knots on the back of it. I'll show you. I'll show you the back. Let's see. Maybe you can see some of them. Maybe you can't. They're really not all that visible. I see one. Anyway. Um, I don't let that worry me, the backs. You're not going to see that back once I get this framed. So to me, it's just not important. If it works that I can stitch it without knots, I prefer to do that. But I'm not going to beat myself up over it either. And then my last finish, start and finish, Kim Goldman at The Contented Stitcher was stitching I Am a Daughter. It's a free pattern from Little House Needleworks. And I wanted to do that for Easter. So I chose 28 count. And it's a picture of this plus fabric, but the tag did not have a name on it, so I don't know. Mine is totally not like Kim's because she stitched hers on a very light fabric. Mine is not light. 
and I used another Victorian Motto sampler color, Betsy Ross Flag. This is the blue that I used. And this is my finish. My plan for this one, I have this board from Hobby Lobby. It's an easel back. And my plan is to pad it good with quilt batting and put this on that. It's going to fit perfectly. And I've got plenty of this thread left that I can make some cording. So I'll put some cording around it. I hope that's what's going to happen anyway. I hope that will work. So that's all my finishes. What's next? Mania is next. I've done Mania in the past, all 31 of them, and it took me, I'm, I'm not sure I'm done with, what year was that? Let me see if I have that written down. I'm not sure if I have all my Mania finishes left from, I guess I do, Abington was one from last year, and I didn't do uh, 31 last year, so I guess I have all of them done from the year, I think 19 was the year I did that. I am not going to do 31 this year either. I don't plan to do 31, let me put it like that. Um, I don't like to have that many whips. I brought my book in here so I could kind of tell y'all where I am right now. January, February, March, April. I have finished 19, no, that's not right. Yes, it is. 19, <laughs> I wrote my notes down, y'all, and I can't even figure them out. I brought into this year 18 whips from previous years. The oldest one was 2019. So I brought in 18 and I have completed five of those 18. So I have 13 left from previous years. My goal is to finish one a month from the ones I brought in. So I'm a slightly ahead, but just slightly. And that's not going to continue because some of the ones that I have um, to finish, have to go, to do, to make that happen, are very large. Like Winter Rose Manor and A Savior's Praise and Spooky Countdown, Hello Halloween, uh, Coming to My Garden. Big ones. Uh, so I won't get through 12 this year, but I'm I'm going to keep trying and get through as many as I can. Two or three of them are smaller, so I'm planning on doing those to make sure that gets my number up. Then this year, I have started 19, and I have completed 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Started 19, 13 completed. That leaves 6. So, um, at, with the 13 from previous years and the 6 from now, I have 19 whips. Now, i got to make a confession here. There are two others that I'm not sure whether to count as a whip or not. Last summer, when I went to um, Silver Needles Summer Workshop with Teresa Kogut and Janine from Blue Flower, can't think of Janine's last name, I put, oh, a half a dozen stitches in each one of the ones that they brought. I have not done any more on those. Um... I looked at them this week and thought, mm, maybe I'll just take those stitches out. But then I thought, why? I don't need that fabric. I don't need those threads. 
I just put them back, but they're really not whips because they did. That's really not a start. A half a dozen stitches or so is not a start, right? I'm trying to justify this, y'all. If you can't tell. Anyway, those are um, right now on the back burner. They're both pretty good size, and they are on the back burner. So what is Mania going to bring? Well, let me pull out. And I, I'm going to show you what I have put in my basket to maybe work on during May. Tomorrow, today's Saturday, tomorrow for sure I am going to work on I'm doing a Christmas ornament for Cindy's Cross Stitch, um, her ornament exchange. And I am choosing to do a strawberry from Deck the Halls. This is a Blackbird Designs book. And I'm going to do this one, which is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. That's going to be my ornament for the exchange. I'll just put, I'll finish it with the ribbon on top, but then I'll put a hanging, a loop piece of ribbon to hang it. I don't have all of the threads that are called for, so I'm switching it around. I'm using 28 count, no, that is not correct. I got to have a 36 count for this one. I've gotten my fabrics mixed up somewhere. Anyway, these are some of the threads that I have chosen to substitute with. They're all conglomerated there, but you can kind of see them. This one's baked apple. This one is caper. I think this is linen, maybe. I had to substitute one, and I believe it was this one. Um... That's chickpea. I'm pretty sure that's not what it called for. It called for amber, maybe. So, that's going to be my start tomorrow. I do have a little bit of a problem because we're going out of town tomorrow. We're going to my son's, and it's very hard for me. I can't stitch in the car. We have to leave about 10, I think. So, I'm going to try to... We're just spending one night. So I'm just going to try to pack a couple of things tonight and maybe start that in the morning, I'm hoping. Okay, and I'm mostly looking at smalls, too, by the way, for Mania. I have all three of Stacy Nash's pen discs. There's Red Hydrangea, Pink Primrose. And berry basket. And I would love to get all three of those done. The fabrics are going to be metal roux, 36 count metal roux. And it looks like this. And these are my threads. That's going to be on my mania list. Now remember, I'm not committing to starting all of these. These are just the ones I'm going to choose from as I go. This one, I'm pretty sure is going to be um, the next choice. I've already found a frame for it. That's the main reason. And I love it. I just love it. Liberty House. This is by... Jeez, I can't read in here. Brenda Gervais. Liberty House. Love this pattern. I think, did Daylene show this? I think Daylene got this one on her latest video. She sent me the sweetest card. I'm going to stitch that one on 32 Count London Fog, which is not what it's called for. It calls for Confederate Gray, and it calls for 40 Count. But, like I said, I have a frame that will work for this one if I do it on this 32 count, so that's what I'm going to do. 
and these are the threads. I don't remember I if these are all the call for threads or if I've substituted some. I kitted this up a long time ago. Um, but I would like to get this one started. This I would like for this one to be my be finished for the 4th of July. Probably not going to happen. May and June. Mm -mm, probably not. But one can hope. I also found another small one that I would like to have done by the 4th of July. And it's this little kit. I'm not sure you can see it. I bought this last summer at Silver Needle. It's called Long May She Wave. It is by... Hmm, doesn't say right there. I love the crow sitting up on the flag. It is already, it was kitted up. I've taken it apart. You can't see much on it, but I'm pretty sure I can get that one done. So that's a probable start as well. And another 4th of July. This is new from Market called Freedom. It's from Rosewood Manor. I'd like to do this pillow. I do not have two critical threads, and they're on the bell. And I called the Shepherd's Needle this morning, and they don't have them in stock. She offered to order them for me, and I thought we would wait and let me look at it a little bit closer. Let me see if I can tell you what it is. Rainbow Gallery. Petite something. Um, but I'm thinking I may have to just order those because I may not find a substitute that I think will work for that. Okay, that won't go back in the bag. Very good. What else have I got down here? Oh, another market one. Schoolgirl samplings from the Scarlet House and I want to do Alice Garner, which is this one right here. I think I'm going to use white chocolate. And the it only calls for two colors. Belle Soir. I think I didn't have either one of them and I substituted, but there's some Belle Soir colors there. And another one from Market. I love this vintage buttons. And I have a ton of buttons. Uh, an absolute ton. I don't have... There's a second... I've got the black color on this. It's not really black. I think it's, I don't remember now. But I didn't have the other color, so I'm going to have to pick that up. And I didn't choose a fabric for that yet, but I have plenty of scraps. And then, I don't remember if I was in a club or if I just picked these up. But I have several Plum Streets. Uh, now, her cereal bowl collection, I've done one of them already, and I think it was lesson one. This is lesson three. And these are all kits. So any of these would be really easy for me just to pick up and start stitching. I don't have to do a thing to get ready for them. And this is the other cereal bowl one, lesson two, that I have not yet stitched. The reason I'm choosing these smalls is because I would like to get 75 finishes this year. And I have tons and tons of small patterns. So, now when I say small pattern, that doesn't necessarily mean it's really small, small. It's just not one of the bigger ones. This is Scattered Seed Samplers. And I'm pretty sure I was in a club for this one. I've stitched a couple of others that are from this series. This is a Fruit of the Vine needle row. And these are all kitted up with all the stuff. She does such a beautiful job with her kits. And I have three of those, I think. Together Forever Pin Keep Drum. It's a little dark. The patterns, I mean, the picture's a little dark and it's hard to see in this cloudy day. 
And this is the last one that I've gotten out to make my choices from. And this is a Lucy Beam called Love in Stitches. I don't remember what I chose. I had to get this one up. 36 count cappuccino, which is the fabric that's called for. And then these are the colors. Not many, I think three maybe. It's all it's called for. One of them has more than one skein to it. So those are the ones I'm looking at for Mania. Now, Dina at Half Stitch Cross Stitch is um, stitch, start doing a start every Sunday. So I for sure want to do that because I want to join Dina doing one every Sunday. But with all that I have here, <laughs> there are more. So my thinking is I will try to do a start Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday of each week. Maybe that'll get me through those and get them started. And if I start it on Sunday, I'll work on it Sunday and Monday. If I start on Tuesday, I'll work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'll start one of the kind of bigger ones and work Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's what I think I'm going to do for Mania. But y'all know I'm prone to not following plans and to go chasing squirrels or rabbits or whatever runs across in front of me. That could certainly happen. All right, I think that's all that I have to show you. Um, please be sure and leave a comment below if you want to get in on the gift certificate giveaway. Um, and all the rules apply. Don't say giveaway or anything like that. Um, and you must be 18. Um, and that's it. That's all I've got. Tomorrow is May Day. Uh, when I was a child, we used to have a big May Day festival at school when I was in grammar school. It was huge. We sang, we learned all these songs, and we sang and we danced and we danced around a maypole with streamers and just had a, a, a great time. I don't think they do that anymore, but it was a lot of fun. So um, I hope wherever you are, that you're having a great time stitching and that the weather is beautiful for you, whatever it happens to be, and that you are safe and well. My prayers are with everyone who is in the Ukraine and in Russia. That continues on, and I'm sad to see it. Um, and I'm thankful for where I am here in America. I hope you are, too, if you are here. So that's all I've got. I'm babbling now. So uh, I'll see y'all again soon. Bye-bye.